that was a big piece of the puzzle that I was missing at the time. And so I really wanted to be on Etsy. I tried being on Etsy, but if you want to be a brand and you want your name out there, which I did, you kind of have to do things a little bit differently than Etsy. When you follow that path of what you're passionate in, only good things can come from there. Oh yeah. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to this video where I have a very special guest. I have Cheryl here of Oxypot, who is also a, an SLA Day student. And Cheryl's only just getting started. And she has already experienced some incredible wins, which I am very excited to have her, her on here today to walk us through her journey so far and learn more about what she did to get to where she is today. So Cheryl, let's just start with Hi. the basics. <laughs> tell us more about yourself. Tell us about your business. Okay, well, I'm super excited to be here. Thank you so much, May. I feel like I'm talking to like my internet big sister. This is so exciting. I'm a little nervous. This is my first YouTube interview, but a little bit about myself is I created a brand called Foxy Pot. Um, the basis was gardens because I love nature. I love to be out um, in gardens and I have a background in horticulture. So my creative gifts led me to create some botanical accessories and products and that's how my brand was created. And I stumbled upon your course. And so here we are. <laughs> and the rest is history. End of yeah. view. <laughs> Let's rewind back in time to before you started Foxy Pot. What was life like? What was your business like? Or maybe you didn't have a business before. What did you and what did you want to achieve at the time? Okay, so a little bit about that background was um, it's a little nutty. I was an illegal immigrant my whole life. So that was such a big hindrance for me. And it really kind of almost forced me to be creative in everything that I did because I didn't have the opportunities that everybody else had, although I wanted to so badly. So being creative gave me an outlet. It gave me happiness. It gave me purpose. And then when I started my brand, I didn't really know what I was doing with it. And all I know was that it was kind of my passion. I felt purpose there. And I felt like creating something was kind of me almost living outside of the matrix, if you will, but kind of creating my own happiness. So that was what the brand was to me. Um, in the beginning, since I had a horticulture background, I was creating like, um, custom succulent arrangements. And that was really cool. It did really well locally. I lived in Orange County probably my whole life until now I moved to Texas, but I was creating these succulent arrangements and that was so cool. I got to work with amazing, you know, clients and just seeing them being really happy with, you know, the things that I created inspired me to be like, what else is there? Succulents wasn't, it was great. It was fun, but I couldn't ship them. And I really wanted to automate my business. Um, that way I could free more of my time and get a little bit more of a profit margin. So that's when I started exploring other things in the brand. And that's when I got a laser printer and yeah, so that's, that's how I make my products. That is a really cool kind of origin story. I watch, I watch a lot of like Marvel superhero movies. So there's always like an origin story to things, but we all have our origin stories too. So it's, it's really neat to hear how you start with one thing, decided it wasn't very sustainable, not very long-term or, you know, expandable or scalable. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. And then you pivoted, but you didn't pivot too far. You still stayed within what you were, what you're comfortable with, what you're passionate with, what you're an expert in which by the way, we have to talk more about because I kill all my plants. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. And I have seen like some Etsy shops selling succulents that they ship to you in like little egg cartons. And I bought one of them, but then I also killed it. So <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but we can talk after this. <laughs> well, we'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what was, um, what was your goal at the time? I mean, I guess you did say it was a lot of just your happy place. Yeah, so it was... It was something that made me happy at first, but then it was almost like these little breadcrumbs that were kind of leading me into what I really wanted to do with it. Because I, at the time, was working a job, but 
it wasn't fulfilling me. And so I think having that creative fire on the side didn't feel good just to have it on the side. I really wanted to just put both hands on it and be like, what is this? And really kind of explore and create something out of it and seeing what it could do in my life and seeing how I could kind of help you know, fan this fire because it was something that I was known for in my community. And, you know, people would knock on my door on the weekends and be like, what, what do you have? And I'm like, let's create something. So it was really fun. And, you know, although it was something that was fun, I also wanted it to be a business. And so that was a big part of that was a big piece of the puzzle that I was missing at the time as I really wanted to be on Etsy. I tried being on Etsy and, you know, I've also listened to your course when you spoke about your background on Etsy and your opinions on it, which it's a great place. But if you want to be a brand and you want your name out there, which I did, you kind of have to do things a little bit differently than Etsy. So I wanted it to be a sustainable business. I wanted to free up time. I wanted to make good money and I wanted to leave a legacy for my daughter. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm looking at it like she's seen me struggle and she's seen me, you know, do different things. And sometimes it didn't work out, but this thing has always been a constant inspiration for me. So it was kind of like, I took the responsibility to look at it. Like, how do I show her that? I can make this work and that I can use this creative talent to bring it to life and give it to her one day, whatever it is. And so now it's finally starting to take shape. And so I'm so excited about that. I'm getting goosebumps as you say that, because like you said, it's a legacy for your daughter and she and kids, they, I don't have kids, so don't trust anything I say, but from what I've seen, kids really do model after what they see and in their surroundings and their parents, right? So it's, you've said so many things that I can relate to, and I'm sure a lot of other creatives can relate to, like when we just have that creative fire and passion that you just can't shut up. You just you want to <laughs> focus, you know, on your job, on other life things, but this creative fire just keeps saying, hey, come back here. You know, you love me and you just can't <laughs> ignore it. Mm-hmm. And that's when I think we know like, okay, our heart's pulled in this direction. We should listen to that. And mm-hmm. from my experience, because I don't know if you grew up this way, but as an Asian person, you grew up thinking, I grew up thinking that I had to do what was right by my parents, by my community and my society. Okay. That meant going into some sort of STEM career. I have a, a degree in math and like all these things that I don't have any passion for. I was good at, but I did it for my parents and it wasn't what my heart was wanting to do. So, you know, you have a very similar story there too. And I'm glad you listened to it because what I'm learning is when you listen to what, what, and you follow that path of what you're passionate in, only good things can come from there. Oh yeah. Doing something that you just don't have much happiness doing. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing I wanted to mention. And the second thing, I think it's really incredible that you're, basically creating your own opportunities. You're creating your own future and you're showing your daughter that you don't have to rely on other people to get what you want out of life. And like, what a great lesson to show her. Like, that's so empowering. It is. And I think you hit it right on the head where I was literally living my life the way that my parents wanted me to. And it's an Asian thing, you know? So that's that's why I can relate to your story so much. Because I'm like, I see my struggles in, in her. And I also see how you've overcome them. So that gave me such an inspiration. It was almost like a lighthouse that was like, Hey, I don't know what I'm doing. This whole industry is so untouched. And May is like this pioneer that a, she's, she's done an amazing job of having a success story, but B I identify with her, you know, not even just being Asian, but just being in this, this space where nothing's really structured and everything is kind of just the wild, wild west. It's amazing that you put this course together. It really helped me. And she, you know, my daughter has seen you as well. Like she'll, she'll stand behind me and be like, who's that mom? I'm like, that's my internet sis. Like she's helping, like we're going to do this project together. So she's such a big part of Foxy Pot where she's learning that 
the standard norms don't always have to apply and you can create something and it can work. And I've had the most success in doing, you know, what I'm doing with your course, as opposed to just before, I must say, I would kind of scour YouTube and like, you know, pin all these videos and they were all random people. So it wasn't a cohesive kind of package to where I could just log in and track everything that I was doing and being like, okay, I have had success in this or I'm missing some tasks in this area. Like, let me go back and do them. So, you know, that has given me so much peace of mind in my journey because I'm like, she, she pioneered this and then she curated this formula and she made a map. So I think that was so valuable for me. And honestly, when I found your course, I was in a kind of a dark time. I think I've told you that, but when I found your course, it was kind of my last push because I was getting all this resistance from doing it myself and doing it wrong and finding out that, you know, I could have done it better if I just did this or would I have done better? Like I didn't know because everyone has a different path, but yours was so cohesive and easy to follow that when I, it was a free video that I watched and I was like, Oh, this is amazing. Like, I feel like I can do this. It built my confidence. And then just taking that leap of faith and being like, I'm going to do this. And I, I hit subscribe and signed up and then everything else just was magic from there. So thank you so much. Well, you can thank all the ads platforms that are showing you all the <laughs> content after you hit subscribe, all the <laughs> algorithms that are working in my favor. Um, you touched on something there too, that I get, it's a frequently asked question that I get from a lot of people. Like, why should we join any course? I don't care if it's my course, just join some course that someone put together to show you like the roadmap. I can't speak about other courses, but that's the difference between free YouTube videos and an actually, like you said, curated experience to show you this is exactly what you do. Because I, I've always harped on this and I don't know why people don't talk about this as much, but what you do, how you do it, all are important, but also the timing of which you do things is also super important. Some things come before other things and there's a strategy behind all of that. So I think just having that, it's not linear, our, everyone's experiences is not linear, but as much as possible, I try to make it so that everyone can experience the highest chances of success. But when you go onto free YouTube videos, it's not linear. You could do this first or that first. and. <clears throat> gets confusing but also you did talk about how you didn't think you could do it and I think that's the bottom line is ultimately you have to believe you could do it you can do it and the course is just knowledge you know but ultimately all of the credit goes to you and your hard work and you going through the course and implementing and you trusting and believing that you can do it and so many people are not there yet but I guess that's why there's a lot of like inspirational content out there that are like not fluff, but you know, it's just meant to inspire, people, right. yeah. which I'm hoping this <laughs> can help us do, you know, it's not just fluff. We're going to get into more of the tactical stuff, which I'd love to learn from you in a little bit, but I'm hoping people watch this video and feel like, wow, you know, if they did it, I can do it too. So thanks for being here. Anyway, just as, as an aside, just wanted to <laughs> Okay. So back to kind of before, before we met, when you were thinking about like, okay, I want to make this um, a bigger thing. What were the frustration? What was the biggest frustration that you had getting in the way of all that you wanted to achieve? That is such a loaded question that when I talk to my other creative friends, we all kind of have the same mountain in front of us. It's just you're one person and there's so many facets and puzzle pieces out there floating. And you're just like, oh my goodness, what comes first, you know, then what? And then, so it's all these moving pieces that you have to kind of put together. And when you don't have a, a structure, you can get really overwhelmed. And so that was a huge thing for me. I'm like, okay, well, I have to make product and then I have to do sales and then I have to promote it online. And then you have to know the technical aspects of like, you know, how the algorithms work and your niche. And so everything that was in the course was really just, it lifted a lot of that fog for us. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken to my friends about your course as well, and I've recommended it. And so they're just like, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like this. And so that was a huge, I mean, for years, that was a big problem for me was, am I doing this right? Am I doing 
not enough? Am I doing too much here? You know, how do I balance this out? That was a big, you know, Goliath that was standing in my way. It's like, how do I take all these little chunks and, you know, eat them in like little bite sized you know, pieces and make it work so where I don't feel burned out. And that makes so much sense because I've always felt that, okay, <laughs> I was going to say, Running, starting and running a business, one of the hardest things a person can do. But I, I do think being a parent is probably one of the hard, the more that tops running a business. And I think part of it is because when you have a job and you work for someone else, there's someone there telling you what to do. And you can oftentimes I find myself like, just tell me what to do. And that's why I hire coaches too. We all need someone to tell us what to do. And when you run your own business there, like you said, it's the wild, wild west. There's no one giving you feedback saying like, you're on the right track, keep going. Because while I try to make it as linear as possible, the truth and the reality is, is that it's not, and it will be different for everyone. And that's why I also think having our group coaching sessions is really important and getting like one, one, one to one personal feedback because every, like you might ask me a question and I will answer it one way. And if someone else asks me the same question, I might give a totally different answer depending on <laughs> where they're coming from. It's all contextual. Anyway, so let's talk about now shift, shifting gears into your success. And I know we have some fun things to share about some of the wholesale mm -hmm. accounts that you've recently gotten, which is super exciting. Um, let's talk about the frameworks in Asality. I know we talk about a lot of different things in there. What frameworks did you use in there? What did you find helpful? Oh my goodness. So, you know, jumping in there, it really just made a lot of my crooked path straight because when I first entered into the space of being like, how do I tighten everything up and focus and really hone because I don't have that much energy during the day to do everything. How do I make things as easy as possible and as mainstream as possible or streamlined as possible? And one problem that I realized that I had, which you pointed out in the course was don't sell everything. Like I was doing custom stuff. And so, you know, my phone would be like, can you do this? And I'd have to be like, stop everything I was doing. and 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 look up like, how do I do this particular thing? And since I'm working with a machine, it's very technical and it was draining me, but I was getting a lot of that. And I was making great money at the time, you know, side money apart from my job, but I was also going to bed really drained and I wasn't having fun. And so I thought, let me just dive into what she's saying a little bit. Cause I, I did want to do custom stuff and, you know, I was kind of known for doing a lot of garden custom things. But then I thought to myself, what would happen if I listened to me and, you know, just, just found my niche. And, you know, that, that was really hard because you're cutting away so, so much yeah. of what you think is successful. And it, it was, it was generating income, but also it wasn't sustainable for the long run. And I had to really be honest with myself and say, look, if I wanted to do that, I would have to clone myself a thousand times. And unfortunately, I can't do that. And I have a child and I'm still working my job. So I had to say I'm not doing custom and really just brainstorm. And I took I took a couple of weeks off to just get in my notebook and be like, who am I? What is the core of this? So that, you know, jumping into the course that really confronted me with myself to be like, what is your brand? And, uh, so the business idea refinement aspect was huge for me because that transformed me into, okay, you know, I wanted to be in the botanical field and make amazing botanical accessories. And I'm just going to have a few items, but make them in different colors. So that was like, it took so much stress off of me and that really hit. So that, that was huge for me. The business idea refinement, it just really just made me look at who I was in the past, present, and then who I was going to be in the future. And I thought I might as well niche down. And it was scary doing that. It was really scary yeah. shaking everything off and all the fluff and all the fat. But once I did that, I felt so light. So that was one part of the course I really loved. And that was so benefiting. And I got so much value out of that. That was module one. That was a very, that was module one. <laughs> very first module coming in. That's awesome. Yeah, it was. Um, so that was, that was amazing. And then the branding and packaging that took me a little while. I think I had to just, you know, take a little break from the course and, and just think 
And I think that's such a huge process of it too, because you can't go into these things and just think you're going to go in and run the whole race and not get tired. Um, you have to really just sit back and just tweak things a little bit and process. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a process. And, um, you know, being creative, as you know, you kind of tend to be perfectionist. So sometimes like, you're just like beating yourself up. So, uh, and then the pricing sheet was, I mean, I have it printed out and like, I put it in so many areas. Like I have it in a folder. I have it above my desk. I have it in my desktop. I have it in my phone. So that was, that was such a great tool. And I love having that, you know, to work with. And that's really helped me because I've, you know, looked at things like you said on YouTube and they're not as cohesive. And so just putting in a Google sheet, like you did and being able to just plug things in, it was, and it made everything so fast. That was so helpful. So yeah, those are, those are some of the things that really just, um, catapulted me into being like, I can do this. And it gave me so much confidence. And I think having that confidence really helps propel you forward to do the next thing. And everything that mountain that seems so big just gets a little bit smaller. So, yeah. Yeah. I sent out an email, I think yesterday or today that talked about how confidence breeds clarity. And once you have clarity, you know what to do and what not to do. And that's just such a reflection of what you just said. So from there, what actions did you take? I mean, it obviously you already said like you did your pricing, you spent time on your branding and packaging, which by the way, beautiful packaging. I was like, wow, this is gorgeous. Like who did this, which we'll put up on the screen here, I'm sure to show other people. Yeah. Was there any other specific steps or action steps did you, that, that, that you took to get you to the outcome uh, and the positive results that you got that we can share later? Ooh, um, I think, and this, this goes back to the course, but finding that community was really important because as a creative, you tend to feel alone, like, you know, everyone around you is kind of doing their own thing and they have, they have their lives set. But when it comes to being a creative person, you're kind of just like the odd man out where you don't have someone to lean on. So having a community was really crucial for me because I could just go on the board and just, you know, type things in and people would cheer for you. And I'm like, that's awesome. I've never gotten that. So that was, that was huge to just, you know, listen to other people's stories and, you know, people who took the course were having so many amazing things happen. So that just the encouragement, and I'm just going to keep saying that because that's a huge part of, you know, venturing out and doing something different than what everyone else is doing. Cause a lot of the times you do feel like maybe I'm, maybe I should be doing what everyone is doing. And it's like, no, this is a little pocket of people who are enjoying what they're doing. And they're making it work and just having everybody in a little group like that, where you could just pop in and be like, Hey guys, what's up? How are you guys doing? Uh, you know, do you have a problem with this? And there there's solutions coming in. So you always feel like you have a lifeline and you can lean on that community. And so I found that as cliche as that might be, you need to have people that, you know, can pour into you and you can pour into them. And so that was so valuable. I mean, that's true. Human beings are social creatures. We can't, it takes a village. It really, it really does. And like I said earlier too, it's the biggest challenge is that you're just one person, but there's so many things you have to do. And I, I almost went crazy. I don't know if you ever felt that, but like being surrounded by the same four walls when your daughter goes off to school and now you got this business you have to take care of and you got no one to talk to about all of the struggles, your questions that you have, it, it can be very lonely. Yeah. So um, tell us more about the the cool accounts. Like you want to talk about Fort Worth um, Botanical Gardens or, I mean, tell us more about what happened. Like what's, what's the kind of stuff that's been happening so, in your business? Yeah. So they're so excited. They're probably going to watch this because I, I went over there the other day and I was kind of like shaking the counter with them. They're like, hey, I'm so excited for you, but they've been so supportive. Well, never in a million years would I have ever thought that I would have landed that account and I probably would have never had the nerve to just pick up the phone or email, which I did both. I, I emailed and, and I called oh. and just was shrouded in doubt. Like if they're not, who am I? Like all these doubts came over me, all the things from the past, like, you know, the voices from like my cousins who are doctors and stuff, like, what are you doing? So it, for me, it was the scariest thing. And it was also the most rebellious thing because then this little tiny voice was like, 
you can do this. And it was your voice. And I was like, I'm going to do this. So then I picked up the phone and I was like, uh, I'm a brand. Do you want to work with me? And they were like, sure. And they were just so kind and so welcoming. So, um, we scheduled a meeting. I brought some samples in and they were like, this is amazing. Like, let's go. So then I went home and I was just in my office, like, what, what just happened? That really and, happened. <laughs> that really happened. and, um, but no, they're so cool. So the Fort Worth Botanical Gardens, they have this amazing Japanese garden that tourists flock to, especially in the fall, which is coming up in the next season. And they have about 7,000 visitors every month that go into the gift shop. So I'm like, that's amazing that my product is in there. But this is just a testimony to this quote that I love. It says, what's the best that can happen? Because I used to not say that. I used to say, what's the worst that can happen? Um, so what's the best that could happen was not only was my brand in the shop, but I'm now on the countertop at the register. So everyone sees it. I'm like, how did that even happen? I have no idea. What's the best that could happen? So I just throw that phrase around now and it's framed, it's reframed my thinking to be like, stop thinking of the worst thing, you know, just go in, be happy, be genuine, be yourself. And people are going to find that to be refreshing and be like, Oh, well, what is that? Let's, let's try it out and see what happens. So that was an amazing place. I am going to give you some clips on it just so you can kind of see the grounds. It's amazing. Um, and it really calmed me down when I was walking up to the, to the gift shop because I was inside freaking out. I was like, Oh my God, I can't do this. And then there's like ponds and koi fish. And I'm like, so Zen, like I'm doing this. So (laughs) You know, it, it's, a, I feel like it's a symbolic full circle moment for me. And then, um, you know, so they're really excited about the product and they're really excited about the video. Um, yesterday I got into the herd museum, which is in my city. It's like a wildlife sanctuary, same thing, picked up the phone, didn't know what was going to happen. And they were totally like, come in. And so I did the same thing. Like I showed them a sample and they loved it. And so now I'm in there. So those are the two things, you know? what I don't know (laughs) but it was just the confidence it was a confidence um that you know the course totally gave me because it I was ruminating on that idea for so so long I made myself small I've always done that my whole life so being in the community being in the group seeing how everybody else was having success I was like I want to taste that I want to know what that feels like and so you know taking that leap of faith really just helped. And so, yes, I did the work and yes, I, you know, created everything and structured everything to present it to these people. But really, if I didn't have that confidence to feel like somebody else like you has done this before and pioneered this, and then I can see that tangibly in your life, I wouldn't have been able to conjure up the energy or the courage to be like, I'm going to follow in that footstep and see what I can do in that arena. So it's really fun. It's really cool. Yeah. Well, so here I am now. <laughs> like, just no big deal. Just, you know, securing wholesale accounts yesterday. And we're going to do one today, too. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. <laughs> wow. And, okay, so confidence. I, that sounds like such a woo-woo thing, but it is really so tangible because it's like, mm-hmm. now you have permission to just go out there and and you know that people are going to love your stuff. And, I think a lot of that confidence came from you just knowing what you're doing now. You know, you're a business owner. You're like a legit business owner. Maybe you always felt that way. I know some people don't feel that way. They just feel like I'm just an artist and I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm speaking to actually, those are the words that I know some people will say and have said, but also you spend considerable amount of time honing in on what you wanted to sell, making it really good, making a good product working on your branding and your packaging, that's like the foundational stuff that I always talk about, the five Ps, the pricing, the packaging, the product. Once you figure that part out and that's solid, everything else becomes so much easier because you have something amazing that people- That was it, yeah. I didn't have those things before I started the course, so. Mm -hmm. And now when you do marketing and you do sales, once, do you have, so do you have any plans on doing more direct to consumer with like online sales or you want to focus more on wholesale? I think, I think I do. I think now that um, I'm 
kind of posting more on social media, which is also something that I lack a lot. Now that I'm starting to post, I'm getting a lot of feedback being like, I want to buy that too. And I'm just like, oh man, they can't just drive to Fort Worth if they're in, you know, Oregon, you know, how are they going to get it? So yes, now I'm more focused on getting individual products online and making it easy to, to do that. So I'm going to do a little more of a deep dive in the course in that arena. I think I, I wanted to do the wholesale thing. Just, it was so sporadic. Like I didn't really have a plan. It was just like, mm, I woke up one day and I just felt like doing it. And then I did it and I was like, okay, deer in headlights. Now what? So then, so that's kind of how the wholesale thing happened. And once I get stuck in something, that's kind of what I do. But also, I don't want to feel like other people who are looking at the brand can't buy it too. So I definitely want to make it accessible to them. So that's definitely something that I'm like focused on more so probably next week. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's a mountain. So we're going to do bite-sized pieces and hopefully it all works out. It will. And because as you just said, you kind of are the kind of person that puts yourself in those situations without really knowing yet what the plan is going to be. but you know, you're just going to figure it out. You trust yourself. And that's, that's what humans do. You know, we're incredible creatures. We will, we will persist and we will figure things out. And it basically, it's like you leap and the net will appear. And that that's a scary thing because people, I know I relate to this so much where I feel like I need to know exactly what's going to happen in all different circumstances. All the, if, if this happens and that's going to happen, I need to see it all before I have confidence in doing something, but that can really hold someone back. So that's something I I'm trying to practice too, is like, just, just, just do it. And then we'll cross the bridge when we get there, Mm -hmm. but that's going to drive you forward so much more. And, oh, I wanted to ask you, so these, a couple of wholesale accounts that you got, were they pretty top of your list of like dream stores I want to work with, or were they just kind of random stores? Definitely. So my, my first big dream when I, when I started um, doing Foxy Pot was to get my stuff in botanical gardens, um, places where I love to go on the weekends. These are, these are places that I personally take my daughter to, and this is where we have fun and, you know, she gets to learn about nature and biology. And so it's, it's not only a place where we hang out, but I'm like, I can see myself in the gift shops because then we'll ruminate in the gift shop and be like, poke around and find all these fun things. And I'm like, why don't they have my brand? Just jokingly. And then I was like, well, is, is it a joke? So it was, it was a huge dream of mine to just get into a local one. And this is, this is a little bit further from me. Fort Worth is about an hour and a half, but it's such a huge tourist attraction that in the back of my mind, like, Oh, if I don't get it, it's not a big deal. It was that big. Cause I'm like, Oh, it's just like a little, you know, wish upon a star type of thing. So when I, when I got the account, it changed everything for me. It just lit this part of me that I was just waiting to, I was waiting for something to spark and just like, burn really bright. And so now that is kind of, I don't know, it's just, it, it turned the key, something turned on. So now, so now I'm on, I'm definitely on. And, and I definitely feel like I can do anything now. Yeah, I can do anything now. That's amazing. Isn't that a great feeling? Yeah, it's a great feeling. You created this from your own brains and from your own hands and your spirit. You made this happen. No one gave it to you. No one said like, call this, call this store up you woke up and you decided to do that yourself, which is, I keep saying it, it's incredible. And artists can do is we create these things out of our bare hands, not just your product, but the experience and the things that people buy at the store. And you're helping, you know, the gift store make money too. And their customers are enjoying your product and it's in their space. And it's just when you really think about the trickle down effect of the impact that what you've made and what you've done has in other people's lives. It's wonderful. And going back to what you were saying too, I wanted to highlight because I think that was really brilliant. And just like the secret to life, you just switched from saying, what's the worst that can happen to what's the best thing that can happen. And that is amazing. I'm, that is such a huge learning lesson for me too, because you put that so succinctly, we 
live with so much fear because we're just, you know, we're just at the end of the day, we are still just humans and we're still animals. And we're like, we just want to survive for another day. We still have this lizard brain in our heads that do anything to protect ourselves from failure, from falling. But we live, we don't live in the caveman era anymore. And a dinosaur is not going to eat us. (laughs) So, or maybe more like a, 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 tiger is going to eat it (laughs) but we can turn that part of ourselves off even though it's such a big part of us but it really shifts us from thinking scarcity mindset to abundance mindset oh my gosh yes exactly part of it it's this whole game is all it's all it's all a mental game it really is it's just a battle between yourself and that is so real i mean fear is fear is heavy and i feel like we kind of feel comfortable in fear oh, because then you yeah, have, yeah. have to be, you know, then, then you don't get rejected. Cause there have been times when I've called stores and they're like, you have they didn't call me back or they didn't email me back. And those things used to hit hard so badly. And I used to hang my cut up on those nose and, you know, go to bed feeling like, Oh, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. But then when you get a big, yes, it's like, Whoa, those no's don't even matter anymore. And then now some of the no's have even come back and turned into yeses. So I'm like, it just flips everything. And you just have to flip everything. And I always tell my daughter, um, you know, cause as children, you, you tend to be scared. And I see that in her, you know, in the dark or something. So I would just tell her like, find comfort in your faith like have faith in your faith and doubt your doubts. So now she says that all the time when she's scared, she'd be like, I'll hear her whispering it into herself in her room when something's scared. She'd be like, doubt your doubts and have faith in your faith. And, and it just, it flips the switch on. So I think that's really important. And it, it's, it's speaking to what you were saying earlier is that confidence is so key to, to this as creatives because we're, we don't know what we're doing, but we know that, we're creating something that's never been done before. And that's so scary. It's probably the scariest thing yes. that you can ever do. It still scares me. And I love, I love that you just went for your dream stores. And that's something I always encourage your students. Like you have great photography, you have a great product, you have great branding. There's no reason you shouldn't pitch yourself to your dream stores, pitch yourself to your dream publications and magazines, because why not? I think a lot of times, like you said, as artists, as creatives, or maybe it's a female thing, we think we play it small and we think, oh, I'm not big enough yet. I'm not, I'm not making enough sales yet. I'm not famous yet to do this thing. And it's like, no, you're already there. You don't need any of that stuff. And from a practical standpoint, a lot of the time stores and publications, they like when you're new, they like when you're not everywhere yet. And you're not like this mainstream product selling on Walmart, because then they know I can bring something new and different and fresh to my audience. And that's of value to them too. So I love that you just went out and did it because so many people are afraid to, to, they, so, so what I usually tell people, so if anyone's watching this and they are still afraid, even after watching this, I would tell them, okay, just then start with the smaller stores that you feel like are less consequential, that if you got a no from no big deal, you move on to the next one, just to build up that confidence. But that really is all it is. It's just a confidence exercise. If you have all of the foundation set up strong, you there's no reason you shouldn't just start reaching with and start mingling with the top people. No reason. There's a second thing I was gonna say, but now I got super like into this one thing and now completely forgot. It's it's early. I told you I wasn't an early person. It's not even that early, but <laughs> anyway, okay. So I actually think your products would do really well on Amazon. And if you could get on there before the holidays hit. That could be, oh my gosh, yeah, that could be really big for you. And like the influencer marketing part of the course, like your products would be perfect for gift guides. And there's still time for that too. So if you wanted to hit that hard. My goodness, I know. (laughs) I can see you doing really well with that. Thank you. Okay. And I was going to ask what lessons did you learn from all of this, but I feel like we've been going, we've been touching on a lot of those lessons already. So if you can think of anything extra aside from what we've already talked about. I would say sharing our stories. That was something that really drew me to you um, as opposed to anybody else online. Um, Because when I was searching for, you know, success stories on creators, your story just 
I don't know, it changed my day. And just from that little step of faith and being like, Hey, she, she has, I remember this one story you said, and it was when you were um, doing pop-up stores and, you know, you put so much time and effort into making all these products. And then you had to pack them all up in your car and then unpack them and put them on the displays. And then it was this whole production and it didn't always turn out the way you wanted it to. I felt that too. And after you did that, I actually signed up for a pop-up store and I was like, let's see what she's talking about. And I, I, I did the whole thing and I was packing up my car and I was like, I'm already exhausted. I haven't even gotten there yet. So, you know, and then I felt what you felt and I'm like, wow, like she's legit. She, she's gone through it and she's done everything that in my head, I had these ideas of now I have to do this and I have to do pop-up stores and now I have to X, Y, Z, all the things. I'm like, she did these things and she, she's telling us what's worked and what hasn't worked. So I think when people tell their stories, um, we can kind of lean into that and be like, well, she's successful. You know, she's, she's had her brand in so many amazing places and been published. Like I I'm going to tend to listen to this person more. And that has been the biggest time saver for me. Cause if I had to make all these mistakes on my own, I would have been burned out and who knows what would have happened. So I think, um, your story was amazing. Like I keep saying the community part of creative hive is so it's a huge part of my, my week because I can just go in and just pop in and see all these amazing stories. And that, that energy between creators is, oh my gosh, if they could bottle that up and sell that, it would be (laughs) (laughs) just talking to one another, just like how you, you know, we're all human, like you said. And when we get to plug in and just be like, Hey, you know, I'm feeling down today. And then everybody just props you up. Or, hey, I had a win today and everybody just cheers you on. Um, I didn't get that from my family. I still don't get that from my family. So I'm like, you know what? This is just a solo thing. Maybe one day they'll come around. You know, they're stuck in in one tunnel vision of thinking, this one way of thinking. And I I don't want to be a part of that. I want to create my own story. So having other people, even online, because like I said, I don't have that around me physically because I'm, I'm so isolated in Texas. I don't really know many people, but just being able to plug in online and feeding into that energy and, and giving back and receiving and it, it flows all the time. I think that is such a big part of, you know, why I get up in the morning. I'm like, you know, sometimes when I don't feel like it or I'm tired or sometimes the doubt is heavy that day. Or sometimes I had a really hard week. I can just plug in and be like, I'm just going to get up again and dust myself off and keep going. And every day is a new adventure. So yeah, I think community and just listening to people who have done everything that I wanted to do. Like you just watching your journey is, is really cool. Now you're in you know television. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I think the internet says she's doing it. <laughs> We're all just here chasing our dreams, you know, because life is short. There's no time to do things you don't have passion in, which is, I feel like, a, one of the big, big lessons or big themes from, from this chat today. This has just been really magical. Um, you had mentioned previously, too, that I forgot, but now I remember was that, you know, I had said running a business is one of the hardest things a person can do, in part because there's no feedback cycle. You don't know if you're doing things right. You don't know if you're on the right path. Whereas in a job, you've got a boss telling you like, do this, do that. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, if you do well, you get a bonus, you get a salary raise, but there's no such thing in, you want a salary raise, you raise your prices. You know what I mean? You have to make that happen on your own. It's all on you. But I, I do think when you were able to pick up the phone and call these stores and they were like, yes, we want to work with you obviously after you meet with them, I don't mean to make it sound like it was super easy because you did go through, you know, a process with them, but that also gives you confidence that like, I know what I'm doing. This, this worked out. And then that just builds upon itself. And yeah, there are always going to be those days where you do wake up. And even though you've gotten all of these successes, 
that you still feel like crap and you don't want to wake up and you're just, I don't know what to do today. And like, I'm stuck and that success doesn't follow you around all the time, every single day. But it is important that we do remember that I've come this far and I did all of these things you did with your own two hands. And you can, you can keep making that magic happen because if you've done it once, you can do it again. So what are you working on next? What are your um, next projects? Oh my gosh. So I'm excited to talk about that because not only am I doing garden things, but I feel like telling my story, my origin story has never been on my radar. I never wanted to say like, Hey, I was an illegal immigrant for 30 years and I couldn't even, I mean, that was so hard. It was the hardest thing to live like a ghost and feel like nothing mattered. So, you know, I never wanted to tell that story. But now that I'm in this space, I'm like, well, what's going to make people what, like, what, what story am I going to say? And, and that's the only story I have. So I'm like, I'm going to flip it though. I'm going to flip it. And not only am I going to do nature, I'm going to talk about why I went into nature. Nature was my safe space. Nature was my therapy. Nature gave me a big hug on days where I really, really couldn't stand being on the earth. And I'm like, I'm going to use my brand to encourage people. So now I'm thinking of making products for gardens that are really encouraging, like um, just affirmations. I have a product line right now that's doing amazing. It's words of affirmation that I say over myself and you just pop them in your planter. And as you're watering your garden, you kind of just say the word like, I'm loved, I'm grateful, I'm radiant. So I'm thinking of just incorporating encouraging words in gardens, you know, and, and I think that's, it just clicks for me. And I'm working on a podcast that I'm launching on the first day of fall, where it's called create your paradise. And it really just speaks about using the garden as a mentor, as a healer, as an inspiration to everything that I do, because that was the only thing that, that I had. Um, so the podcast is just going to talk about psychology times nature and just encouraging people to be like, Hey, if you had really hard times in your life and you didn't know who to talk to, or it was too hard to talk about it or say it out loud. Sometimes it was really hard for me to say things out loud because it would hurt. But if I would just go to the garden, something would happen. Something would transform and all those dark feelings would just be replaced with like sunshine and fresh air and birds chirping. It was so beautiful. So all these different things transformed me to be like, I can get through it. So if I can kind of tell my story in little tiny chunks on the podcast and be, be like, look, there, there is this encouraging um, power that you have when you link up with nature and then maybe make some cool products according to each episode, then I would feel like my purpose is fulfilled finally. Yes, it's great being in stores. Yes, it's great meeting amazing people and creating beautiful things, but there's something missing. And I think that's, that is what is missing is just leaving that legacy to others being like, you know, I went through dark things and it, it, my life wasn't always happy, but you can create your happiness. And this is how I did it. So that's my health coming up. That's so exciting. You'll have to tell us when you launch your podcast so we can share the link with our audience too. Because that sounds so magical. That's Thank you. I feel like we have a very beautiful yard right now. And when I go into it, I always feel like all my problems just go away. It's it for me, I feel like it is this feeling of like, huh, here I am really ruminating on this one tiny problem when there's this whole earth around me that's like there's bigger things to think about. <laughs> you know, it just puts things into perspective. That's the experience that I've had from from my garden anyway. And I feel like one of the big takeaways from this chat too is just hearing about the sharing your stories and how that can really impact other people and getting creating that legacy for yourself. Like you said, our voice can do so much. And you know, we're we're creating those waves as well. Some people do it through their art, their products. And I love that you're also doing this through your story and not being ashamed of it anymore. Maybe you still are. I don't want to assume that you aren't, but being more con comfortable with, with voicing it out is important and is, is really great to see. 
Well, who would you recommend a sale date to? Oh my goodness. All my friends. All, All my friends. creative. Yes. They're every I feel like everyone is so creative, especially now with social media. Everyone kind of has a side hustle. So anybody who's doing any sort of side hustle in the creative space, I would definitely be like, just just try it. Just try it out. See you, see how you feel about it and feel like it. You know, you have a policy, right? And I do my two times money back guarantee mm-hmm. policy. Right. But I didn't, I didn't take that offer. I I dove in and and really great things happen. So I think that can happen to anybody. They just apply themselves. It's not, like you said, it's not just going to just pop up out of nowhere and happen for you. You have to put in the work. You have to think about things and make things happen. But yeah, I would say the course is 1% help of what helped you. 99% of it was all you. So (laughs) all the credit for that. Cool, Cheryl. All right. So I guess to wrap up, let us know where we can find you and where we can stock you and buy your cool products. My goodness. Okay. So I am at Foxy Pot and I am also starting the Create Your Paradise podcast, which is on Spotify. And like May said, I'm going to be on Amazon. So look out for that. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you for having me.